Hi guys, welcome to Drum Dog. This week we're coming to you from Liverpool at the UK Drum Show 2022. So the UK Drum Show is back finally and it feels great to be back, this time in Liverpool and today we are here at the guests of the awesome Rubik's Drums. Check them out, the link's in the description. Now we're really happy to say that this year the show is excellent, lots of different people displaying their products, but there's way too much to cram into one video so what we thought we'd do, we'd break it down into sections. We're going to take you through what we thought was the best stands there in the categories of big drum kit brand, independent drum kit brand, symbol exhibitor, best new gadget, and best percussion instrument, which is something that doesn't go on a drum kit. Now, if your favorite exhibitors were different to ours, let us know what they are in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there. Now, it was a really hard choice choosing in either of these categories, but particularly big drum kit brand, because it's always really exciting to see the stands from Yamaha and Natel, DW, Gretsch, and so on, but you couldn't help notice as soon as you walk in, you're hit with a massive display of beautiful drums from the British Drum Company. Here's John from the company to talk you through their stand. Okay. So we're standing amongst the live lounge section of the, the stand today. Um, the one that we're closest to at the moment, this is the newest version of the uh, Cardinal Red yeah. that we have. This one's just come out. Um, this is the first time we finished a kit for it. So it's 13 by 8, 14 by 14, 16 by 16, and two 22 by 14 bass drums. It adds, I mean, I don't know, like it absolutely looks amazing. This is the first first cut version of this kit that we've done. Yep. Um, I'm, it's probably my favourite uh, finish on the stand. 100%. Like I'm really, I'm really beyond. Uh, this is a different. This is the lounge one as well. This one's uh, this one's called Whitehaven finish. This one's more of a showpiece to show off uh, the different sizes for, for the lounge series that we do. So we've got six six by seven, uh, eight by seven, ten by seven, eight by twelve. Um, 14 by 14, 16 by 16, uh, 20 by 14 and 22 by 14. And again, it's just something that we stood right at the front of, of the drum show this year. So we wanted to blow people's socks off when they walk in and can see some new finishes that uh, we're releasing for this year. Gabby, my area. I'm, get doing, out. I'm doing a bit of filming. Oh. Get out of my area. No. It's got to stand there. Think of the continuity errors. <laughs> um, so, moving over to the legend area of the stand now, we've got this is a um, UX finish, this is the Richmond. Um, we've got here, we've got an 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 22, and a 20 inch gong. Um, a lot of people have been asking about the gong today because we don't really, this is maybe, we don't do them very often, but it, again, it's important to showcase everything that we can do. Yeah. There are other uh, UX finishes available. This is the one that we decided to bring to the show. Um, there'll be others we'll, um, we'll be making more uh, later on in the year and to go with it as well. This one, this series that it is particularly is a Founders Reserve. So the difference is as well, there's always a gold, a gold behind the B that we have on a, on a, uh, on a Founders Reserve. And then that's obviously, that's the name of the, that's the, the badge that goes with it now. And um, what's special about Founders Reserve as well is whatever the inner is, will be what matches on the badge itself so we have some more founders reserve snares over in in the area over there and they all they all have different inners so one the, the one that will say mahogany one says cherry and the other one says birch again but um again it's just with the attention to detail that we try to get into every product to just try and accentuate it's on the inside as much as the outside over here, this is another Founders Reserve uh, kit. This one's an Indian apple wood. It's an abject you can see. It's an absolute beast. Yeah. It goes uh, 10 by 7, 12 by 8, 13 by 9, 14 by 10, uh, 14 by 14, 16 by 16, 18 by 16, 20 by 16, and 26 by 14, all the way around. And it sounds, it sounds as impressive as it looks. Now that one also has birch written on the vent as well, because that's, that's what the inner core is. Um, this is an example of a Founders Reserve where this finish, there's a, like, it's very unlikely that it will be replicated, so the next thing that we move on to, that will have a different sort of finish, whatever we decide to pull out to add to the exclusivity of this particular echelon of price range. Um, 
It is, we, again, it's, it, it reminds me a lot of that we don't normally get, we don't normally get to see our kids set up like this. Yeah. So it's always exciting. We want something that's going to turn people's heads. We see it. And nothing quite will turn someone's head quite like a 26 inch space truck. So these are the Founder Reserve. Yep. Uh, but these are the snares. So then we've got these ones. These are even more exclusive. There'll only be 10 of these available of each. So the difference between uh, these and your other snares, obviously we have the single flange hoops with the matching claws. Uh, we, again, we have the gold behind the V. And then as, as I mentioned before, so this van reserve has a mahogany inner, so it labels what the, what the inner shell is. And again, on everything, again, we always use cherry washers on the inside of all of our... Of all, our every, everything you see here will have cherry washers in it, sort of a new uniformity for British Trump Company moving forward. So we're going to use... Make sure that's going to be a bit of an altar that we use on everything on the inside. Um, again, there'll only be... This is one of ten. Okay. And then in the, in, in the future, what we'll do, we'll move on, pick another a combination of sort of an exotic outer and an exotic, exotic inner, and we'll put them together and we'll make, make these founders reserves, and they're going to be... Although these will come and go, the, the feature of a founders reserve is here to stay. Yeah. Now, just like the big drum manufacturers, the show was littered with small, cool, independent drum manufacturers, but we couldn't get smaller than this one. They only had one drum kit on the stand, but it was beautiful, exquisitely made, and even have their own in-house designed hardware. This is Turan Custom Drums. What, what wood is there in, in, in this guy? So the outside, the darker ones, is the oven coat. It's also being used in uh, guitar bodies these days. Right, right, right. As a replacement for rosewood. Right, okay, ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they started looking for some replacement. And this yeah. is, tone-wise, the thing that comes closest to rosewood. Right. And then, of course, there's uh, maple. Maple. White lines are quilt and maple. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful combination. Very warm tone. So this was the basic first design we had. But they're a little bit too heavy to put on, on those because once you put them on, the skin is already tuned to it. <laughs> no Just because of the weight. Yeah. You can feel it, it's got some weight here. Can I pick it up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It really does have some weight here. Yeah, those are some serious hoops. So what, what's in this? Is that the same words reversed or...? No, there's this um, maple on the outside, Wenge stripe is yep. here, and this one is Bosse. It's an uh, African hardwood, right. real rock hard. <laughs> this one's got a very, very special grain to it in the middle. It is exact the same wood as the dark one here. It's also over ankle. But right. it just goes to show how different those boards are, each and every board is a different pattern. Yeah. So it's all a matter of picking the most stable boards so they won't warp and they won't bend and still come up with a nice pattern. So I start with the outside and make them about this high. It's, it stays um, all around. Yeah. yeah, so I glue them together. It's got a certain angle. I glue it together. And I glue this one on. It's about this high to start with. And just route it down. Clean it down until it's got the right size. And then I glue the next one on. And the middle part. So it's all layering and stacking it up. But in the end, those lines are all the same. The exact same size. Because they all go under the same uh, height. But well, you can see how secure it is all by the exit. So you've got the yeah, the lugs going straight through those rings there. Yeah, but it's yeah. still you know, there's no issues with it. We're also using all uh, instead of plastic washers, we're using leather ones. It dampens down the, the noise and, and the, the trembling from the lugs. Much better than plastic. Right. Plus, on a high-end drum, I don't like too much plastic. <laughs> it's just. I don't like it. It's nice. All these things are, are made to perfection, and these you can 
open up like so. It's got three of them. So you can open it up and it gives a really dry sound to the drum. So this one is, is two drums in one, actually. You close them up and you got this very warm resonant sound. You open them up and you got this really dry studio sound. So you can play with it, whatever you want, like. Wow. And that's all CNC the same as the hard barrel yeah. car? Yeah. All these are made especially for us. Wow. So, yeah. It's really refreshing to see a custom drum company actually designing and kind of specifying hardware yeah. instead of getting off the shelf parts because it's always the same tube lugs you see on everyone's exactly. drums. Exactly. Yeah, it's really stylish hardware, really stylish. Yeah. Now every year at these drum shows you can see the smaller independent cymbal manufacturers are starting to take up more floor space than the big four brands altogether. And we really like the Amedia display. And if you're lucky enough to be able to get to play their whole range, it's a great way to choose cymbals. Amedia don't have um, hierarchy, they don't have ranges. So it's yep. not a top of the range, not a bottom range. Yep, yep. What Amedia have is a team of people, each, each member of the team, has a vision of what that perfect symbol should be. Right. So the, the three main guys, two brothers and a cousin, they each have a vision of what the perfect symbol should be for jazz, for rock, whatever, and they each make their own version of that symbol. Okay. So what, what you find is there aren't there aren't a range, there's just colours. So it's whatever your ear likes. Yeah. And then what they do then is they put their name to each and every symbol. So is it just the three of them that make them? Just the three of them that, that wow. make them. It's just the three of them that finish them, and it's only one of them that signs them off. <laughs> and each symbol is absolutely handmade, start to finish. The only machine they own is the roller. So when they're rolling out the, the blanks, that's it. That's the only machine they own. They're hand hammered, hand lathe, hand finished. Even the logos are hand applied. Everything from start to finish is handmade, which is another reason why it's really difficult to say this symbol or this symbol or this symbol because every single symbol is unique. So even the same, even, you know, even fusion 15 another, fusion 15. it's going to be unique. Right. So that's why we don't say there are the top of the range, bottom of the range. It, it doesn't really work that way with the media. All we do is we give you a stick and we go, go and see what you like. I really like it when you see a solution to a problem that's so simple that you can't believe no one thought of it before. This is our favourite gadget. Thank you. Well, it's just that case of where to put your brushes yeah. without having to like ruin the fact that you can't use your floor tom <laughs> or you know try to put, floor tom or put them on the floor. You know, so you can just use your brushes and then this is going to hold them and they stay ready, so yeah. you can just play. You know. It is, wow. yeah, but normally it's yeah. strict down. Yeah, that's yeah. mega spicy. It doesn't slip at all. Like, there's not much to grab onto there, but it just... It still goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've tried pretty hard to miss, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be pretty wait, wait. ambitious <laughs> to not, you know. Yeah, very powerful magnets in that. That's yeah. cool. Big fur freestyle. These look new. Can't wait to try one. Oh. choice that's a piece of percussion you don't use on a drum kit we wanted to go a little bit different from your usual cajon or congas and we had to go for the amazing sound and engineering of these incredible hand pans yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you make these because they're I mean they're serious bits of kit yeah so <clears throat> in the very beginning what I would do is I would take a, a sheet of uh, sheet steel and uh, and I'd have two metal rings that I'd bolt that between and then I had that sat on a, an oil barrel and in the beginning I had like a, a dumbbell in one hand and a kettlebell in the other and I would like smash round and round and round in circles over like four hours and stretch it so that I should get the, the very basic dome and then I can start shaping it oh, of course I'd have to make a, another one for the bottom as well um, and so it would take a long long time um, and then uh, 
after a while, um, there was a, a dude in America called Colin Falk that um, saw this thing on uh, a TV channel, um, How It's Made or something like that, where they were inflating steel uh, structures with water. And so him and a friend was like, maybe we can form the shells like that. So they created this machine that would inflate the steel with water and that re works really well. So he gave that open source after using it for a year, gave it open source. We started using that method. And then um, and then a couple of years ago, I actually designed my own deep drawing tool, which is using a, um, a hydraulic uh, cylinder, which would push 200 tons of pressure to push a metal form up to create the shell. So I've actually essentially right. sort of invented, with the help of a friend, we've created this new machine. Um, to do it all in house now, which is amazing. So um, yeah, that's how we get the basic dome, and then the rest of it, the, the tone fills are, and the dimple are, are stamped in a press, but that doesn't give you any of the sound. All that gives you is the basic shape of the dimple and the tone fill. And then after that, what I have to do is then transfer it to my uh, tuning rings, and then I shape with um, uh, air hammers, and I sculpt all of this, all of this space in between the notes. I have to stretch it out like a drum skin, like you're stretching a djembe or something. And so that gets all stretched out, you get a nice radius to the instrument. So and that actually puts the tension into the notes, the, the, so you can start tuning it. Every tone field has three partials, so you've got the fundamental, which is the, the whole note vibrating, and then you've got the octave, which runs down the long axis of the note, which you can hear is an octave higher than the fundamental. And then across the short axis, you've got the fifth, and so together, they sound really rich like that. You can also pitch bend them, like you would on a guitar string. Um, and so it actually gives the, the handpan more than just the nine notes or the eight notes that you can see. So you've got the eight notes, but then you can play just the partials if you want to. But there's a lot to be thought about when it comes to the geometry of the notes so that they're not affecting each other. Um, some handpans have uh, just a semitone jump between a, a note, so the closer the note is, the frequency, the more likely they're gonna bicker with each other. So the further they are apart on the frequency range, they're less likely to bicker. So you've gotta do a few little tricks here and there to make sure that they, um, that they work properly. Yeah, we've got the Danny Carey signature series over here as well, which is uh, the exciting thing for us, for us here this year, which we've just made for Danny Carey. These are the production models for uh, production. We're only ever making 33 sets of these. Um, he's got his set, and, uh, and this is the first set that we've ever showcased, so. That's very cool, it's very cool. What's that centerpiece, what's that, it's visual? This, again, so, um, for, for this this scale, it's a super low, super low. Can you hear that? Oh, wow, yeah. It's yeah. in the second octave and it, uh, it's an F2. And so, um, if you were to have the, the normal sized hole on the bottom, the port on the bottom of the other ones, something called the Hemholtz resonance, um, the pressure is, is a lot different on this. So it needs a smaller hole on the bottom. So um, I decided to 3D design uh, an insert, I then 3D printed it, and yep. then took a cast of that, and uh, and that's why I have a nice looking one. Again, same philosophy, if you can make it look beautiful, why not? Yeah, yeah. So that's it, we really hope you enjoyed our look around the UK Drum Show 2022. Again, let us know in the comments what your favourite part of the show was. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.